Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Melissa Siegel. I'm a professor of migration studies and this is a channel about all things migration. So today we're going to continue with our migration snapshot series where we zoom in on a specific country using the European Commission's Knowledge Center on Migration and Demography's Atlas of Migration. And today we're going to be looking at Poland and we'll look at a number of indicators of migration in Poland today. So we'll look at the population of emigrants and immigrants, we'll look at the residence permits issued, we'll look at asylum applications, we'll also look at one measure of irregular migrants in the country. We'll also look at citizenship and naturalization, as well as some indicators of social inclusion, and finally, education and employment. Now let's just jump right in and get started. So Poland is a country that is known within the European Union, at least, for being a country that is a bit less favorable to immigrants, especially immigrants coming from outside of the European Union. And this is actually quite interesting because Poland actually has very few immigrants. So if we look here at the population of Poland, the population of Poland is close to 38 million, at least in 2020. And of that, around 1% of the population is actually an immigrant or has citizenship from outside of Poland. Of that 1%, that is made up both of EU and non-EU nationals, but that is a very, very small percentage of the population that is an immigrant, especially compared to other European countries. Now, that is the stock in 2020. If we look at the flows, so of course, if you want to know the difference between migrant stocks and migrant flows, you can also check out the video on that here. I'll also make sure to link it down in the description below. But in general, stocks are the given number of immigrants in a certain point of time, and flows are the, are the number of immigrants that have entered or left a country in a given year. So here, if we look at annual flows in 2018, we can see that around we had around 214,000 immigrants come into the country and around 190,000 immigrants leave the country. So we can also break this down within the EU and outside of the EU. In both cases, both for immigration and for emigration, the movement within the EU is much more important than movements from outside of the EU. So with regard to immigration, about two thirds are from within the EU and about one third from outside of the EU. If we look at emigration, so moving outside of Poland, we see that around three quarters of the population is moving within the EU and only about a quarter outside of the EU. Now let's look at some first residence permits that were issued during the years 2017 to 2020. And what you can see here very clearly is that the main reason residence permits are issued in Poland is for work. Um, uh, with really a minority for family reasons, education, and other reasons like, for example, asylum or refugee status. If we now look specifically at asylum and particularly first-time applications, between 2017 and 2020, you can see here that, well, there are not a large number of asylum applications, at least in this period especially compared to other European countries. We have anywhere from 1,500 to 3,000 um, first-time applicants in any given year. And what you can also see clearly here is that there are slightly more male applicants than female applicants, but it is a bit more evenly distributed compared to some other European countries. And of course, if you're interested in comparisons with other European countries, please do check out my other snapshots on many other European countries. You can find them in the description below, and I'll also so link the playlist here. So now if we look at first instance decisions of these asylum applications, what you can also see very clearly is that the majority of these asylum claims are rejected. So basically 80% and upwards of these applications between 2017 and 2020 were actually rejected with a very, you know, with a minority of around 20% actually being accepted. So if we look at one measure of irregular migration, we can look at the number of people who are ordered to leave the country and no longer have the right to stay in the country compared to those that actually leave. And what we see in the case of 
Poland, at least between 2017 and 2019, we actually had quite high rates of return of upwards of 80, almost 90%. However, in 2020, that changed. Um, of course, we also had the situation of COVID and a reduction in mobility for a good portion of the year. But you can see here that in 2020, really um, only 8% of those that were ordered to leave actually left the country. So of course, those that are left over, we can assume end up in some kind of irregular status in the country. Now, if we look at naturalization rates, so naturalization is when foreign citizens gain the citizenship of the country that they are currently in. So in this case, it's Poland. We can see that in general, um, uh, naturalization, like in many other countries, is mainly of non-EU nationals. And that is because, of course, if you're an EU national, you have more or less the same rights as a Polish citizen in the country. So there's in general not as much benefit to gaining citizenship for a European national as there is for a non-European national. So we can look at a few indicators of social inclusion. The first one we can actually look at is net income. Um, net median income for the period in 2019. And here we generally only have data for nationals and non-EU citizens. And what we can see, but of course, you need to remember that non-EU citizens also really make up a very small minority of people in the country. And uh, compared to other countries, what we see is that actually we do see higher um, income from non-EU immigrants compared to nationals. But when we look at some other indicators like overcrowding rates, risks of poverty for adults and for children, we can see that there is a higher rate of overcrowding and of risk of poverty for immigrants compared to nationals. Now, if we look at education rates, what we can see here, even though there is some data missing, um, is that in general, um, EU immigrants and non-EU immigrants have higher rates of education than nationals in the country. If you look at non-EU nationals, you see that more than 50%, almost 60% of the population has high levels of income. If we look at EU nationals, it's upwards of 60% of uh, um, the population that has high levels of income, while only 33% of the national population has high levels of income. So you can see that immigrants here make up a quite highly educated bunch. Now, we don't have so much data in other areas of, uh, um, for instance, employment but one thing that we can see is if we break um, employment rates down by levels of education, particularly if we look at medium and high levels of education here, we see that there are not very big differences in employment rates between uh, at least non-EU nationals and uh, the local population. But we are missing some data here on European nationals. So again, um, what we can see here is uh, um, the current immigration situation in Poland, even though there is some missing data because there are such low numbers of immigrants in Poland to date, which is quite interesting actually that we see such anti-immigrant sentiments in Poland um, over the last few years, given the fact that there are actually very few immigrants in the country and those that are, are there seem to be performing quite well. Of course, there are um, you know, new developing issues with regard to particularly irregular migration and asylum um, at uh, Polish borders. But well, this is the situation, particularly in 2020 and 2019. Now, if you like this video, if you found it helpful, please do like it, subscribe to the channel, hit that notification bell so you don't miss any of my videos that I upload every week. And of course, if you found this video useful, please do share it. And of course, if you have any additional information on the situation in Poland, please do feel free to write that information in the comments below, particularly if you are an international migrant in Poland today. And I look forward to seeing you next time. Bye-bye.